So ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for us to release the NAT Health Patient Confidence Study by IQVR. Now the COVID-19 pandemic, we all know, created challenges for corona patients and also non-corona patients alike in terms of availing healthcare facilities. This study was conducted to assert the patient challenges and provide a roadmap enabling healthcare providers to prioritize patient needs and cohesively cater to them. At this juncture, once again, I'm going to bring back Dr. Preeta Reddy and I will also invite Mr. Amit Mukim, Member Governing Council, Nat Health, and Managing Director of IQVIA. But before I go on to handing it over to them, let me introduce Mr. Amit Mukim to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, very briefly. He has been a management consultant and turned into a business leader. Currently, he oversees the India operations of IQVIA, which is a global healthcare technology, information, and clinical research organization. His experience in digital health has extended to supporting innovation and entrepreneurship in India. He's an advisor to the NHA on innovation, president at Thai Mumbai, and mentor to health startups. And prior to IQVIA, he was head of healthcare at KPMG. He was one of the youngest partners in KPMG and helped the firm build and grow the private equity and strategy business and the healthcare practice for India and across Asia Pacific. Warm welcome to you, Mr. Mukin. And now I'm going to request Dr. Preeta Reddy to please say a few words. Thank you and uh, Amit, uh, welcome on board. Uh, I'd like to thank you and say that this IQVR study has been of tremendous importance uh, to the industry. The outbreak of COVID-19 led to major changes in patients' treatment plans and due to restrict restrictions in accessing healthcare facilities, and we all know that. And as the threat continues, it became important to understand patients' readiness to return to their routine hospital visits and continue treatment. And this study will support hospitals and healthcare, the industry at large, to navigate through the process, try and see if we need to change processes, and we need to return to stable uh, operations and viability. And to this effect, <clears throat> excuse me, in January and February this year, IQVR conducted a survey with uh, 2,134 patients to be exact, with different treatment needs across the metro, tier one and tier two towns in India. They also reached out to patients who had planned their surgeries and required uh, IPD management and to track if their patient behavior has really changed during uh, COVID-19, which I think it had. Uh, this, I think, will help us elucidate what we need to do uh, going forward and how is it going to impact treatment plans. So it was very focused, very specific as a study, and it really helped uh, the diagnostic centers, uh, hospitals, large, small, uh, with, within the cities or the tier two towns, uh, to really try and change the way they function so that it works for the patients. So having said that, I'd like to really thank Amit and IQVIA for taking this on because it's a very valuable study and very important to us at NatHealth. Thank you, Amit, and over to you. Thank you, Preeta, and a very good morning to everyone. Uh, I hope I am audible to everybody. Uh, and thank you again for two things, Preeta. One is to set such a fantastic tone uh, in the seventh Nat Health event. I have been part of each one. I can tell you that it's just been grown uh, in content, in quality, and in everything else, which is rich for the sector. I would also like to thank Nat Health for giving us this opportunity to partner on this very interesting research that unearths current patient behavior in India towards accessing healthcare facilities in the ongoing pandemic times. Preeta, you very rightly mentioned uh, for us, uh, when, we, when we undertook this survey, uh, of course, it was time was very short. Uh, and the other dynamic is that things are continuously changing. But I, I think from a NAT health perspective, and we all the industry leaders who supported us on this survey participated, we felt it was very important to check in and get a pulse of the patients on how they are thinking about 
accessing healthcare facilities across various areas, right? So we had three categories uh, which we covered on patients. The first category was patients with planned elective surgery. It was either planned cardiac surgery, whether it could be CBH, CABG, valve replacement, pacemaker implant, cardiac ablations, etc. Cancer surgery, which could be across various cancer types. General surgery across elective, whether it was gallbladders, appendix, tonsillitis, etc. And orthopedic surgery. So that was one category where people would choose and plan their time and the hospital to conduct the surgery and procedure. The other category who we, which we covered was patients who required IPD management, either on acute or on chronic. So an acute could cover high fever, typhoid, dengue, everything else, and chronic was across dialysis, cancer maintenance therapy, chemotherapy, etc. And the third and really important category that we covered was around patients requiring frequent doctor visits in hospital OPDs. And that too across chronic or even acute areas, whether it could be orthopedic related to arthritis or asthma. And, and why I say the third category is so important is that we know that the current infrastructure of India is as dependent on the hospital sector, even for OPD treatment as it is for hospitalization cases. And hence we, we had to understand what patient mindset is as remote consultations are happening, as patients were traveling across cities to see whether they are really accessing the OPDs. Uh, can I request someone to put up the uh, presentation slides if possible while I walk through uh, the summary of the findings? So what we wanted to share with this group in this event was a summary of what we have taken away. The detailed work is still being assimilated, which we will share, Preeta, with NatHealth and the other members over the course of the coming weeks. But I think what we have gathered is tremendous insights on how patients want to access healthcare in this year. What is their behavior regarding the various facets of healthcare? And if I would request the presenter to go to page four. The next one, please. Yes. So we spoke about this, and one of the things I wanted to call out was these 2,000 plus patients, our focus, and of course the timelines given for this study was largely around the private and corporate and large hospital sector. And thank you to many of you who helped us support and drive such a large survey in such a short time. Uh, we did, we tried to cover metro hospitals to the largest extent because not only from a drainage perspective, but because they correspond to a large chunk of some of these areas. And to the point I was mentioning across the three categories, we tried to cover almost equal areas uh, across these three categories, whether they were OPD, IPD, or elective surgeries. The cities that were covered were obviously the larger metros, and then we also covered the tier one and tier two cities. Uh, across Pune, Lucknow, Ludhiana, Chandigarh, Coimbatore, Cochin, Nagpur, etc. If we can move to the next page, please. Yeah. So I wanted to share with everyone uh, the next one. The key takeaways before I deep dived into uh, the uh, the conclusion slides. And I think one point I want to call out: uh, while our entire pandemic has focused on people who have been affected by this disease. The takeaway for me is that non COVID-19 patients paid a high price in the wake of COVID-19 last year. Almost 60% of the patients in India delayed their treatment on account of fear and lack of confidence and anxiety to be able to freely access healthcare facilities. Can we move to the next page, which has the survey findings? Yeah. So, that itself tells us that a large mass of patients which either are in the metro cities or are moving to metro cities actually could not access uh, what they would have done in last year itself. And these are non-COVID patients. This year, however, the scenario is changing. Patients wish to come back soon. And our survey explored what lay ahead for the healthcare industries and stakeholders today. 
right? So year 2021 onwards, we do see that there is a decline in anxiety levels to access hospital facilities. Most patients wish to return to their treatment plan latest by June 2021. And I would want to caveat this June 2021 timeline because this study was done during January and February before the outbreak or the increase in the, uh, the cases in the last 10 to 15 days. So this timeline may shift a little bit, but at that point of time, what we did see directionally is that a lot of patients, a majority of them would like to return to their treatment plan in the first half of this year. What does it mean for the hospital sector itself? And I think one thing we took away was that there will be a need to manage a growing patient backlog and we need to watch for long patient wait lists and worsened health outcomes. And I'll tell you why I'm, I maintain this point, though we do have a patient making different choices to go to hospitals. Now, this, the second thing uh, I think with respect to, uh, can we go back to the previous slide? Yeah. The second thing is uh, we also think that 62% of the patients who delayed their treatment believe that their health condition has been negatively impacted. And we actually probed that particular point on how they thought it would manifest in the way they are accessing the healthcare. And one key takeaway was that there was anxiety on their healthcare cost increasing because they had pushed forward their treatment. And I think that is something, that is another point which I think we as stakeholders of the healthcare industry will need to account for as patients come back. I think the third thing was that very interestingly, and I will when I when I share the numbers, there was a resounding uh, mindset of patients to come back to the same hospital which they would have considered prior to the pandemic, irrespective of city, irrespective of movement. And I think they, this, this actually sends a strong signal or a, or a statement that, you know, the hospitals that patients had chosen, irrespective of pandemic, that, that confidence of that hospital to be able to provide a safe infrastructure environment is on top of mind of these patients. The fourth and very interesting point, and this links to the entire adoption of teleconsultation, is that when we looked at the chronic patients and you know we got feedback from them, there is a strong preference by these chronic patients to wish to go for physical visits going forward and not really rely only on telehealth and teleconsultations, right? Because they, they felt that the impact and the effectiveness of a physical visit is much more than teleconsultation. And the last point, and we and we did see it, uh, and uh, where home healthcare stepped in and really supported a large part of the pandemic, the adoption of home healthcare for potentially hospitalized patients was mixed. And there I see that there is an opportunity and there needs to be, I think, a stronger integration if there's going to be uncertainty between hospital visits and what patients will do at home to be able to make this channel work. If you can move to the, uh, the key findings. Yeah, the next slide, please. Yeah. So if we, so going back, I think the, the uh, key point here is that when we, when we looked at last year, almost 100% of elective surgery, and this is not surprising, were either canceled or postponed indefinitely. And a large number of this was seen in patients from tier one and tier two cities because they could not travel, right? 18% of the IPD patients canceled or postponed their sessions and admissions. And you, you need to understand that this is the patients which required acute care. So a fifth of them actually had to postpone it given the pandemic. And a third of OPD patients canceled or rescheduled their OPD visits to their hospitals, while 66% of them, which is the balance, continued the OPD visits, but with less frequency. So all in all, last year saw a huge drop in all of these three segments and electives, of course, were most impacted. However, 60% of these surgery patients rescheduled the surgeries from August 2020 onwards, and which is where we saw that patients started coming back in the second half, latter part of the year. 
And of the IPD patients, the 18% who postponed their sessions and admissions largely were dialysis patients. And the of the OPD patients, we saw diabetes, which is not surprising again because of fear and anxiety related to comorbidities and arthritis, arthritis patients who canceled or rescheduled their OPD visits to hospitals. Now, what it means for us, uh, which is our takeaway, is that if we correlate this information and insight with the willingness of patients to come back, I think it's vital for healthcare delivery centers to design and we work through certain algorithms for prioritizing patients in order to manage the anticipate growing backlog of canceled patients and new patients to make sure that the right patients get the treatment on a prioritized basis. If you can move to the next slide, please. Of the patients who cancel their treatment, 95% of those patients wish to continue with the same hospital, right? And, and this is a resounding number. The balance only switched because either there was inconvenience of travel or if the hospitals did not have space or they felt that the cost of treatment had increased significantly in the original hospital. And a big part of this reason for continuing is trust and belief and the high level of satisfaction they had with the existing hospital doctors. Uh, some of the hospitals who had extended support to manage the patient conditions when they had postponed their care. And the last and really important point was how confident patients felt with their choice of original hospitals on the safety measures that were being taken by the existing hospitals, right? And this is, I think, an incredibly important point where the communication and the assertion of how some of these hospitals have ensured safety measures to these patients will continue to bring and sustain that confidence in the patients who want to come back to the same hospital. Can we move to the next slide, please? And most of the patients who had canceled or rescheduled or postponed their, statement, uh, their treatments, uh, as I was mentioning, you know, our, uh, the, time, the timeline we got was June 2021. Uh, it may move around a little bit here or there given the current situation we have. But the point here was that one is 75% of all of the elective surgery patients, and, and that was the, the highest number, right? Where we got almost 100% who had postponed. Three fourths of them want to do it in the first half of the year. And 85% of the IPD OPD patients also want to resume hospital visits. And these are mostly patients with cardiac or respiratory illnesses who have struggled not coming to a hospital to address their condition uh, on being on certain other therapies. And I think it's imperative for delivery centers to proactively communicate to patients the safety protocols, safety of facilities and staff, and share a very clear and patient personalized plan for rescheduling the care for patients looking to return to their treatment plan. Can we move to the next slide, please? And one of the things uh, which we, of course, saw across the country, whether it was IPD, OPD, practicing teleconsultation, witnessed an uptick during the period uh, from March to December. However, when we looked at it, 50% of the patients engaged with teleconsultation of the survey we saw, and that number started dropping from 50 to half its number in the second half of the year, and it's just about 11% January onwards. And that had completely got replaced, where almost 50% of the people from this year onwards prefer an inpatient, in-person interaction. And only 30% of patients are willing to continue with teleconsultation in future, while other consider in-person interactions to be important. I think it's very, very critical to consider this because to me, uh, there is no either or here. I think there has to be a way to create OPD facilities uh, which are slightly more unique and not in the current way they are being run, where the waiting period as well as the consultation is done in, a, in an environment that makes a patient uh, comfortable as well as have a model that has a very clear handover process between tele teleconsultation and physical visits. And those are not separate or isolated, but I think it's part of the whole treatment 
continuum that needs to be established. Can we move to the next slide, please? And of the uh, people we spoke to on how they had switched their treatment plan with home healthcare services. And this is not the demand for home healthcare services, which we saw significantly rise and be met by the very able home health players in the country. This is people who did not go to hospitals. Did they switch their treatment plan with home healthcare? And we did not see much of that shift happening. Uh, and many of them continued just home with family support or through doctor's guidance, uh, which is not surprising again. But I think here there needs to be a thinking on how home healthcare can better integrate uh, with providers to make sure that there is seamlessness in the handover process or for providers themselves to extend much stronger home healthcare support. So these were the key findings of uh, you know what we found out. There is, of course, uh, much more detail behind it. Team has been. Uh, working really hard to put all this together. Uh, and if I were to just conclude it with uh, our key takeaways on the next slide. Yeah, can we move to the last one? Yes. I think one is we need to figure out a way to cut through the patient backlog if it does happen, right? And, and, and there is a way uh, we feel or a mechanism to be put in place for prioritizing, scheduling, managing the patient flow. I think the other thing we will see is patients will need, especially a certain economic class will need financial aid, those whose treatment cost has gone up. I think it's a pivotal moment to rebuild patient trust and confidence. Uh, a lot is being done. I think a lot uh, has already happened. Stronger communication is the need of the hour. Uh, we believe there is a need for specialized OPD infrastructure uh, so that there is uh, a way in which uh, consultations can be run seamlessly irrespective of how the transmission happens or doesn't. Uh, and I think there needs to be a stronger linkage between, uh, as I was mentioning, home healthcare and providers to form a seamless solution. So again, uh, I will conclude this high level summary, Preeta, with, uh, with these five takeaways. Thank you again to the Nat Health team for giving IQVIA the opportunity and thank you for my team for putting such a robust study together in such a short time frame. Thank you. Amit, um, thank you so much. You know, it's a, it's a significant study. It's a study which is going to really impact uh, not only the provider network, but, you know, the patients and their confidence. Because with this problem of COVID, we can't really afford a backlog either. And uh, then systems, health systems are not going to be able to cope. And I think it's a valuable study. Uh, thank you. And thank you for your team for uh, putting this together for us. It, um, it's truly valuable.